Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a very, very special custom knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Sharp by Design Tempest. Uh, this is an exceptionally beautiful and very expensive, one of a kind Tempest owned by uh, at Sierra underscore bound on Instagram. Thank you so much for sending this in. It is because of this person that I have been able to handle some incredible pieces here recently. His collection is absolutely insane. Seriously, give him a follow. It's absolutely because of people like him that I'm able to bring you guys daily knife content. It's also because of my generous patrons. You can check out my Patreon right down in the description. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. First off, this is a custom knife, meaning there is an enormous amount of handwork that goes into this, an enormous amount of time. And uh, in the case of uh, Brian Nadeau from Sharp by Design. Uh, this is masterwork when it comes to knives. I have, I'm not the most experienced when it comes to custom knives, which is why I don't do reviews on them. It doesn't make sense because I'm not, uh, I'm not the right caliber of reviewer to, to do that. So, but I do like to showcase this stuff. It's very interesting to me. Um, I've, I've, I'm not able to uh, afford stuff like this, um, but I, I still enjoy it. I still appreciate it, you know, on, on the level that I'm able to comprehend it. And I want to share those thoughts with you guys and just show you guys. And, and if you weren't aware of some of this stuff, I like to bring it to, uh, to people's attention, right? So yeah, more of an overview. That's what it's going to be. Um, this is a one of a kind knife. Um, it is not something that you can go out and buy. If you're interested in getting your hands on a Sharp by Design Custom or something from Brian and Doe, your best bet is to do uh, two things. Number one, follow them on uh, follow him on Instagram. And this is also the same Brian Nadeau from the Knife Nuts podcast, which I have permanently linked down in my description. Uh, Levon and Dave and those guys uh, do an excellent job. Um, so you can subscribe to them for additional news. Follow Sharp by Design and Knife Nuts podcast on Instagram, and also check out the Sharp by Design website, uh, where things are periodically posted, right? Um, these are not easy to get your hands on. They are very popular. They take a long time to make. They are not mass produced, so it's not like he's got a ton of these laying around on shelves waiting for people to buy. Um, this one in particular, um, there were so many people that wanted to purchase it that they actually had to host, uh, they, they did like an auction and um, Sierra underscore bound won that. So um, that's, uh, that's, that's the kind of stuff that you have to go through if you want to get your hands on something like this. But it is, I mean, it's understandable. It's the reason. It's not like people are guessing. People know what kind of object this is, right? So there's a lot of people wanting to, you know, people who want to spend that much money. This is that, the type of stuff that people focus in on because it really is that incredible. Um, <laughs> whenever I show this knife, there's always a couple of people who say, ah, it looks like a gas station knife. Um, so the reason that people say that, I mean, it's easy to look at something that's bright and colorful and you go and you, you go to a gas station, you look at those knives in the display case that are 10, 20 bucks, right? And they're really bright and colorful and it's, it's easy to come to that conclusion. It's not that custom knives look like gas station knives. It's that once again, we have a situation where some Chinese companies who don't really care about anyone or anything are simply attempting to copy the um, incredible aesthetic of really expensive actual handmade knives that take on that aesthetic. So it's more that gas, some gas station knives look like really high-end custom knives. That's, a, that, that's absolutely a, a strategy that's being implemented to grab people's attention, bright and colorful, and because this is what a real one looks like. So um, you can, you're obviously welcome to have your own opinion, but that's why. That's why people say that. Um, these, these are the originals, right? What we're looking at here, let's go ahead and um, this is going to be probably a long video, right? If you're familiar with my channel, then it's going to come as no surprise. Let's go ahead and get some measurements here, real quick. So this is a big knife, right? This is, by the way, not the production Tempest that is coming soon. If you guys got your pre-orders in for that, that's the one that's made by Riot, much like the um, also Sharp by Design Evo Typhoon, right? Absolutely excellent, but much less expensive. Those are production knives made by Riot. This is 100% a US custom knife. 
Overall length of the Tempest is coming in at, I believe, just shy, just barely shy of nine inches. The actual, let's make sure and get this spot out, the blade length is four inches and the cutting edge is about 3.6. Very large. We'll do a couple of size comparisons here real quick up against the Ontario Wrap Model 1. Obviously, I'm trying not to let anything touch this. And up against the Spyderco Para 3. I don't think we need to do any more size comparisons there. We'll go ahead and weigh it. What are the handle scales? A lot of you guys are gonna know that this is Timascus, or um, basically a titanium Damascus that's been anodized to bring out lots of different colors. It is not a surface finish. It is patterned all the way through like that. The blade is Damasteel. While normally, you know, with a damascus steel blade, what you see here, the etch brings out the darker and lighter areas. Um, this is a deep etch to give that texture. It feels like, or it looks like maybe you could feel it, and you can. You can feel that. It's a deep etch, and then they've gone back and polished it so that you can see the lines, but it's the same reflectivity throughout instead of a darker and lighter contrast with stuff like this. So this is damascus steel, not Damascus. This is damascus steel proprietary. That's PMC. 27 and RWL 34, so the performance of the blade will be very similar to my favorite steel of all time, CPM 154. Um, absolutely appropriate on a custom knife. Again, it's not just the base materials, it's the amount of work that goes into it. So understand that a blade like this, getting it to look like this, finish it up, yeah, that's gonna take some time. That's gonna take a lot of extra effort, right? It's, I mean, we're not even getting into yet the complexity in the handle scales, right? There's a lot going on. Solid, unmilled. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm incorrect about that. It's hard. I always miss that because there's a shadow there. It is actually milled out on the inside. The uh, I think maybe we can probably take a look. Uh, there is a an area in there that's been carved out for some weight reduction. Still a large knife. It's going to be heavy by some people's standards, but I don't know. How important the weight is i'm sure there are i mean maybe maybe sierra bound uh plans to carry this right not crazy five ounces about about what i'd expect it's not insane it's going to be heavy for some people not for others i'm not sure exactly how much weight that carries if you're wondering though the balance on this very good it's right there about where you're going to put your finger in that uh i always call it the primary choil the position where your index finger is going to fall it's balanced right about there which is what i'd expect this has the unique lipped detent system, which is present on um, knives from Sharp by Design. It's absolutely uh, present in um, like the production re variants like the um, Evo Typhoon. It gives it a very crisp and very unique flipping action, something that you cannot find in any other knife right now. Some people are, you know, a lot of people who handle Sharp by Design knives, you know, you're gonna hear the same thing. The flipping action is just absolutely incredible. The break of the detent is so crisp and absolute. And that is the case here, right? And then the action, in my opinion, I've said this many times when I handled the, uh, the other Sharp by Design custom that I handled, which was the um, Arch Nemesis. It is perfect. Too fall shutty and it's a little bit nerve wracking when it comes down, right? Too tight and you don't get the satisfaction of it being fall shutty. The first thing I check for is consistency inside the pivot. Is it consistent? Yes, absolutely. I love the click of the detent. There's no lash, right? The brake is crisp. There's enough flipper tab there for you to get the appropriate amount of leverage to break that detent. And then the snap into place is just infinitely satisfying. This is fall shut, but it is incredibly controlled. We're at an angle here. So you have that consistent, crisp, like, it's perfect, it's controlled, it's smooth, it's exactly what you want. I like that perfect in-between. I have said this so many times, I am not somebody who judges action purely based on fall shuttiness. I want it to be controlled all the way down. I believe that it's much harder to accomplish that that perfectly balanced, consistent smoothness. I believe it's much harder to achieve that than it is to get a knife to fall shut. There's lots of very inexpensive knives out there that, that fall shut, right? So that's not as impressive as what this knife is doing here. This is a proprietary pivot, which does not bother me at all. Uh, Brian Nadeau has talked about this. Um, the Everything is fit so tightly together. It is, each one of course is tuned right then it's not like they have like a mass tuning process and they apply it to everything no each one is individually tuned and fit together right they don't he doesn't want you getting inside it i mean you could fat you could make a tool and get in there but 
feel like most people are gonna agree with me, right? If you're wondering what did this knife go for, uh, it went for about $4,000, right? So you can scoff at that if you want, but remember, there were people beating down doors for this thing, putting up bids. It was sold the moment that a picture of it went up on the internet, right? It was just a question of for how much. It does not surprise me at all this is not on this, it's not, not, I'm not even going to say the same ballpark, it's not on the same planet, it's not in the same universe as knives that we've come to, you know, if we're talking about stuff like the PM2, right, the Ritter Hope. Yeah, they cut, they fold, they're knives, right? Is it in the same universe? No, it isn't. <laughs> this knife took way more time, way more precision machine work, way more expertise, way more knowledge, right? Stuff that I can't even comprehend, which is, again, why I don't do reviews on this stuff. I just like to share. This is show and tell, basically. I would love to own this, but frankly, I can't afford it. Fitment. Seating of the hardware is beautiful. You can see, it's, it's hard to see because of the, your attention is on the color of the Timascus, right? But it's, it's lipped up there around the pivot. I just love that. It's a beautiful touch. Look at the machine work. Oh my God. God, that is just unreal. That's insane. Look how they've split this right here and polish it, right? I don't know if I can actually get it to focus, but there is ever so slight. Can you see the diagonal lines there up on what would be? It's kind of this faux bolster look with a dividing line here. Ever so slight micro milling. Oh, God, that's wonderful. And then they transition here and we have this wavy texturing. Beautiful. Edges, obviously, all knocked down. It seems silly to even point that out, right? Nice large size fasteners, and there's just one. <laughs> I mean, it's the, the, the one holding in the pocket clip. Believe me, we'll get to that pocket clip. This is excellent. Just every little teeny tiny little thing. There's just something interesting on every last inch of this knife. Now, a lot of people are gonna say, it's too busy for me. It's too, you know, this is too, there's, there's too much going on, right? Um, if you look at pictures uh, on his Instagram, if you look at pictures on the website, obviously there are a lot of different patterns. There's a lot of different finishes, right? He works with, of course, titanium and zirconium, um, uh, carbon fiber. There's a ton of different materials, right? Custom knives that are made by Brian and Doe take on a more or less busy look. Timascus itself is going to be expensive. Then there's the machine work, right? So the Tempest is the Tempest, it's the profile, right? I think they have a front flipper version of it as well. Um, but they uh, take on many different forms. Damacore steel, uh, M390, I think he's working with maybe M398 now. Uh, Dama steel, right? So as is the case with most custom knife makers, you know, the profile of the design is gonna be what it is, but then the aesthetic can take lots of different forms, right? So the people who were interested in this, obviously they went and did the bid for the auction. Um, so yeah, uh, it's not like if you you know are wanting to get a Tempest, you only have the option for this. Truthfully, if it were me, if I was gonna go for a custom from Brian Nadeau, I probably would go for the ultra crazy, like mega, I get they, like a full dress version is what I would refer to this as, right? I would go for the crazy, Timascus, the very bright and colorful, and then something like a Damasteel or Damacore blade. I would want that, right? But not everybody's gonna want that, and that's fine. This one is what it is. Back here, you can see the backspacer. Intentionally, ever so slightly, machined just below the line of the scales on both sides. That's absolutely intentional. It is absolutely even on both sides. I think it's a nice contrast, right? If he did that, he could have done this Timascus and it would have looked good, but it's nice to have the highlights on the hardware and the pocket clip in contrast to the Timascus. This pocket clip is one of the most beautiful things I have ever seen. <laughs> I love that pocket. Man, they do such an awesome job with their pocket clips. Deep enough, uh, corners are knocked down. You have the continuous rise underneath the clip so it doesn't fight the various infinite number of pocket seams that could be out there. I didn't put this thing in my pocket, but I can tell you guys it wouldn't be a problem. Just judging off of other things that I've carried, this is gonna carry exactly the way that I want. There's a nice little pocket milled out underneath the pocket clip. I'm trying to give you guys as many close-ups as I can. Just beautiful, and this texturing is not so aggressive that it's gonna fray up your pants. It's actually really nice to the touch. It's really nice. Got some 
Just the little details like how they do the relief cut right here. They cut these extra slots so that it still does what it's supposed to do. There is, of course, a steel lock bar insert doubling as the over travel stop. Uh, lock up is at, what do we got here? 25 to 30%. Disengagement, easy, no lock stick. Beautiful, beautiful action on the way down. And as you would, as you could guess, <laughs> absolutely dead centered. Sorry, had my finger on that lock bar there. Uh, the edge is done perfectly. This feels like, uh, it feels like a shard of glass that broke so perfectly that the edge was just, just by the, the will of the universe was just perfect, right? I mean, I honestly, I think this would make glass or obsidian jealous. That's how perfect it is. Bevels, cutting bevels, perfectly consistent. I love the blade shape. I love this big swedge up here. It's just stunning. I also love how far out the jimping extends. I love how nicely knocked down the corners of those individual slots are. It's just beautiful. I also love that he's got his logo in here, right? A little bit of oil on there. Um, but I love the uh, Brian Adil. It's just like slipped in there. It's not like he's trying to put it out here and, you know, take a, take away from the uh, the beauty of the blade, right? No, it's just, it's just slipped in there. It's nice. This is so so wonderful um stop pins located out here and then let me take a look here there is shouldering i believe yeah you can see how that wraps nicely oh boy ergonomically i mean if you were going to use it boy is it comfortable look at all this room this real estate slide your hands choke back choke up get right up behind that blade nice sharpening choil up here just absolutely made for the human hand. It's just, it's its crazy to me, you know, something that could have taken on a million forms that weren't ergonomic, which you, you know, would be really uncomfortable to use. And that, that's oftentimes what we see in the custom knife world is it really doesn't matter, you know, to the people who are interested in buying this stuff sometimes that the knife is actually ergonomic or functional or uh, utilitarian in, uh, you know, uh, a bunch of different settings, right? It doesn't really matter if it's versatile. But this is <laughs> now the uh, the um, the uh, arch nemesis, right? That's not going to be the easiest thing to use in any number of different circumstances, right? It's just amazing because it's this big, beautiful dagger, right? But this, if you really wanted to use this, a lot of people would look at this and they'd say, "This is a hundred percent an art knife." It's not. There's a difference between a knife that's not necessarily intended to be carried and used and a knife that's not actually made to be used. There are lots of art knives out there that are made in a way and with materials that would not translate well to use because the tolerances or the way that it's set up right, it's just not, it's not gonna, it's not gonna actually be functional. This, despite being incredibly expensive and very beautiful, this is Timascus and Damasteel. The tolerances are wonderful. It's very solid, very durable. Absolutely, if you wanted to only carry and use this for the rest of your life, would it hold up? Absolutely, make no mistake. These can be used. Whether or not they actually get used isn't up to any of us except for the person who buys it, right? That's up to Sierra Bound. He can do whatever he wants with it, right? <laughs> it's his. But can it be used? Yes, yes. I have no doubt in my mind that if I owned this and decided to carry and use it, that it would serve me well till the end of days, right? You have this incredibly high, right? The blade stock thickness is not all that thick. In fact, it's probably about the same as my Evo Typhoon here, 140 thousandths or so. And it drops down to a beautifully thin cutting edge. Oh my goodness, lots of, uh, lots of uh, capable performance oriented cutting edge here. Every last little bit of this was thought out. In fact, if I was doing a review on this, I would say there's nothing that I would change. And I mean that. There's nothing here, right? My limited experience as a knife reviewer, one who's always learning and is definitely not right all the time, right? <laughs> um, there's nothing I would change, right? Not saying that if I was like, I would recommend changing this. Somebody like Brian Nadeau is gonna go, cool dude. <laughs> I don't care what you think. <laughs> and he's right, you'd be right, right? I mean, this is amazing. I've said this, I've said this before too. Um, 
I've spent, uh, the most I've ever spent on a knife is about 1300 and there are knives that come, you know, from Brian Nadeau periodically that, that are in that general area. If I was to ever purchase a, um, a custom knife moving forward, it would be through Brian Nadeau. If I was ever going to spend $4,000 on a knife, right? If I was ever going to spend an, a whopping amount of money on a knife, it would be on a Brian Nadeau custom. On a custom knife, right, something that's got more human um, uh, in it than machine, there's way more room for error, right? Oftentimes, you know, you'll hear people say, I've got a custom knife and it's nowhere near to the level of perfection that my Riot production knives are. Well, those are made by machine, right? So everything is just laser cut, uh, basically as a result of a computer program to be as perfect as possible. What's amazing here is that this is just as good, arguably better. The precision work here is ridiculous. Now there are some machine elements here, but there's a lot of human in this. I would expect, I expect when I handle a custom knife to see little goofball flaws here and there. Nope, <laughs> not in this case. For those of you who are used to the, um, the level of precision that comes with the Shirogorov, right? But you're attracted to the idea of owning a custom, something that you know, blood, sweat, and tears of an actual human being went into. It's scary, right? Because you're like, I have this expectation of perfection and I want to climb the ladder, but I want that same level of just absolute gem cut perfection. It's scary to move into custom territory because there is that the, the room for human error. With Sharp by Design customs, the two that I've handled, you're getting everything there. This is stunning. And not only is it the most expensive knife I've ever handled on this channel, I think this is probably, I mean, the this is the most perfect design that I've ever, I mean, it's just so beautiful. It takes on, you know, the aesthetic. Like if you, you know, remove the finishes, remove the color and everything, just imagine the profile of it. It takes on a, the, a very simple knife look. But the reason that, you know, that is, we see that so often, is because it works. Big, roomy, ergonomic real estate, a simple, uh, I mean, I'm gonna call this a drop point blade with lots of cutting belly, consistent edge, right? Reasonable thickness, but it drops down to a nice thin edge, right? Easy to deploy, easy to manipulate. All of the simple elements are covered, right? It's like, obviously he knows how to make a perfect knife, and then he just went above and beyond with the aesthetic stuff. But the aesthetic stuff is functional, right? Timascus, durable, it's not gonna corrode. Uh, Damasteel, it's basically not going to, it's very unlikely that it will, right? It's also usable, very well balanced. The texturing is beautiful to look at, nice to the touch, but it's also functional. Pocket clip again, beautiful, functional. What an amazing combination. Normally there aren't gaps in my dialogue, but I mean, knives like this do it to me. Wonderful. Just, I'm infinitely more impressed with Sharp by Design. I'm, I'm, I hope that I get to handle more. I just, I love these guys. This was a gush fest. I'm sure you guys knew that that's what it was gonna be going into this. <laughs> I hope you were satisfied over the last 23 minutes, but that's gonna be pretty much it. Thank you again to Sierra underscore bound for uh, allowing me to handle this. It's really nice having opportunities like this because as many knives as I get to handle, I can't sit here and tell you guys that stuff like this comes along every day. This is, this is pretty special. So give him a follow, seriously, and check out his collection. Oh my gosh, I've, seriously, I, the guy's got the most amazing collection I've ever seen. That's gonna be pretty much it today, guys. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.